Hello, what's up YouTube photographer Ronix with another try in this tutorial. I'll be showing you how you can easily edit a photo in Photoshop from the very start to the very end. And with this, I'm just going to be learning how to do skin retouching and how to have even skin tones in your photos using Photoshop. So simply like this video and don't forget to subscribe if at all you are watching and you're not subscribed yet to this channel. So what we want to do first of all is working on the skin. You're just going to come to the background and, and simply duplicate by pressing ctrl j on the keyboard or you can press command j on the keyboard uh, to create two layers and double click to rename this layer to low frequency and i'm going to name the up layer to high frequency so just double click to rename the layers so that is the high frequency layer and after doing that we're just going to come and hide the high frequency layer and select the low frequency layer so just come right here to filter and you're going to come to blend come to gaussian blur so after doing that, just come and take the radius all the way down and click on an area on the skin that has more textures than the rest of the skin and simply come to the blur radius and left click and start dragging it up. So you have to stop at the point where by these details are just starting to disappear from your photo or from your image. So I'm just going to stop at about 5 that is where I'm just starting to close out on the details. So I'll just take it around 5.5. .5 that is when I'm just starting to close out on the details in this image. So I'll just come and hit OK. Select the high frequency layer and now activate it. So just come right here to image and come to apply image. So when you come to apply image, it is going to open up this apply image window. <coughs> and under this, simply come and select the low frequency layer. Make sure the channel is set to RGB. The blend mode has to be subtract. The scale, just type in 2 and offset, 128. And make sure the invert option is not turned on. With the past at 100%, preserve transparency and mask are not checked. Just come and click OK. Change the blend mode from normal and change it all the way down to linear light. And we'll get back the image looking like the way it was meant to be. So we're going to put these two layers in a group by selecting them and dragging them into this folder icon. So open up this folder by clicking on the drop down arrow and simply come and select the mixer brush tool. So right click and get the mixer brush tool. So after selecting the mixer brush tool, you have to first of all set it. So if I told the mixer brush tool is not showing under the brushes, you can locate your mixer brush tool here. So just make sure that the brush is clean. And the option that says clean the brush after each and the stroke has been selected. With the weight of 9%, load 75, mix at 90, and the flow of 100%. Make sure sample oilers is not turned on. So after doing that, just come and hide the high frequency layer. And select the low frequency layer so for this step we just want to even out the skin tones in this image so in order to even out the skin tones using the mixer brush tool make sure you don't zoom all the way in so what we want to do we simply want to come left click and hold down and start painting so that the skin tones are nice and even so left click and drag and mix the tones or the colors that are looking similar and they are close to each other so that you can blend them so to blend the area between the highlights and the shadows reduce on the size of the brush by using the bracket keys on the keyboard and blend the transition between the highlights and the shadows so that you can create a nice and smooth blend between the skin color and now the skin is going to be looking nice and even so what we want to do in this case we just want to blend the transitions between the skin tone so come this area and mix just like that so basically to mix we are simply left clicking and holding down and dragging the mixer brush tool and after mixing a given color we left click and hold down and we mix on a brand new area so just like that we are now having a uniformly retouched image and we have evened out the skin tones in majority of the areas on the face so to work on a small area, reduce on the size of the brush and do the same. Mix and blend just like that. Mix and blend just like that. So blend like that. So you can notice that the image is looking a little bit plastic. But when we come and turn on the texture layer, we still have the textures in the image. And you can see the before and the after so far for what we have been able to achieve. So just hide this once again and continue working on the east on 
the photo or the image so we are going to come and mix the tones in the neck area and blend the skin tones on the rest of the body remember skin retouching is basically fine tuning every area that has skin so that it can look nice clean and flawless so blend just like that and mix every area that has skin so after doing that the next step is going to be turning on the texture or high frequency layer and looking at the before after before after so if i told you missed out a given area you can work with the texture layer turned on so after doing that the next thing is going to be selecting the high frequency layer and coming and selecting our clone stamp tool after selecting the high frequency layer the reason for this is because textures are, are part of the high frequency layer after getting the clone stamp tool we want to remove the pimples that are part of the textures in this image so select the clone stamp tool right there and make sure the mode is set to normal and make sure the hardness is set to all the way to zero percent with opacity and the flat hundred percent make sure align is selected and the sample is set to current layer so to remove a pimple or blemish we simply hold down the alternate key on the keyboard and make sure that the size of the clone stamp tool is slightly bigger than the pimple or the blemish that you want to remove so to remove the pimple hold down the option key on the keyboard or the alternate key on the keyboard and left click on an area near the blemish or the pimple and simply release the option key or the alternate key on the keyboard and click over the blemish to paint clean skin over the blemish and replace it so in that way you are going to be cleaning and removing that pimple or that blemish from uh, your photo or from your image so take your time as you're trying to clean up and remove these pimples or blemishes so for a line you simply select a clean area close to a line and drag to remove uh, that kind of line from uh, that given area so this is what we're doing so basically like i said always take your time as you are removing the pimples or blemishes by zooming all the way in and finding and identifying those little pimples and skin imperfections and remove those blemishes so i have removed most of the blemishes in the face and the image looks better than it was before so i'm just going to remove part of the blemishes right here on the body and part of these scars on the fingers so this is the before after before after so if at all you want to create uniform skin tones for this model you're simply going to measure that the hand and the face are matching so just come the adjustments right here and simply select gradient map so after selecting gradient map it's going to display any other color and don't mind about this because you're going to change the color that is displaying on your computer so that it can represent the skin tone so just come and make sure the gradient icon is selected and hide the gradient layer by turning it off left click on the color option and make sure the sample size is set to 5 by 5 average then left click on this pointer and make sure the location is set to 0 and left click on the color option to open up the color picker options and simply choose a darkest point in the skin so for this we just want to use the face as a reference point so you're just going to look for a dark point on the skin so this is the darkest point of the model skin and click ok then click on the brightest point by single clicking on that pointer and click on the brightest point of the skin then you're going to click in the middle and type the location 50 and simply click on the color option and choose what you feel should represent the mid-tones of the model skin so I just choose that as my mid-tones and click ok so you can see that we have mapped the colors from the darkest to the brightest color of the skin tone and simply click ok so just come and now activate the layer and change the blend mode from normal and change it all the way down to color and after doing that select this white layer mask in this case and press ctrl i or you can use command i on the keyboard and just come right click and get the, the normal brush tool and make sure they are set to zero percent the mode is normal opacity and the flat hundred percent make sure you have black and white on these two color swatches so if i told you have any other random colors you can press d on the keyboard to reset those colors so after doing that you can now increase on the size 
make sure white is the foreground color so you can switch between black and red by using the arrow key so what you want to do just want to paint color over the model skin so that we can create that kind of even and uniform skin tone uh, for this model so just come and paint on most of the areas that have or contain skin and by just doing this you can see right now the face and the hands are having this kind of even and uniform skin color so i'm just going to paint on every area that has skin and i make sure that no area has been left out so with this step we are basically trying to create even skin color or skin tones for this model so just come and paint on majority of the areas that have skin and don't paint the eyes or lips so if i told you make a mistake and you accidentally for example painted a given area for example here switch the brush back to black and you can now come and erase the effect from affecting that given area so i'm just going to come and also paint right there so after doing that or after painting the next thing is going to be so i've painted on every area is fine tuning the image so just come and feather the image a little bit just like that and come to the opacity right here and you can drop or reduce on the opacity to your liking so for this image i'll just leave the opacity to around 80 is okay so before after before after so if I told you make a mistake, for example, on the nails right here, you can switch the brush back to black and you can erase the color from affecting the nails. So I think this is okay. So if I told you feel like the skin tones are leaning more on the green side, simply come and create a selective color adjustment layer and you can now come to the reds right here and you can play around with the cyan's. So I'm just going to play around with the science. So I'll make the skin tone a little bit more on the red side, just a little bit. I think uh, this is better. And now the skin looks better than it was before. And if at all the skin looks oversaturated, simply come right here to the adjustments and create a hue and saturation adjustment layer. Come and select the reds and you can now come and simply take down the lightness to your liking and you can add contrast by coming and creating a black and white adjustment layer and change the blend mode from normal to multiply and you can come and reduce on the opacity to your liking so I just leave it around 11 11 looks okay before after now the image looks better than it was before so you can now come and create one more selective color adjustment layer to play around with the blacks in this image so just come and select the blacks and come to the blacks right here and intensify the blacks a little bit to around five and now that is okay and you can play around with these colors right here and cool down the blacks a little bit i feel like the blacks are crushed so i'll just come and take the blacks back a little bit so this is what we have right now so one last step is simply coming and adding glow or shine to this image so in order to add shine to this photo we are simply going to come and create a curves adjustment layer right there and you're going to take or scroll down and brighten up the image by dragging this slider towards the left hand side until when the image is bright enough then double click on this layer to open up the layer style dialog box so after doing that just come and make sure the blend if is set to gray and come to where you see underlying layer so make sure gray is selected come to the underlying layer and take the effect out from the shadow areas until when you feel like the highlights in the image are the only areas affected and click on the option key or the alternate key on the keyboard and split this one towards the right hand side until when you feel like the effect is blended into the image click ok and select this layer mask and press ctrl i on the keyboard to invert the effect select the brush tool and make sure white is the foreground color and just paint in the areas or the highlight areas of your image and in this way it is going to be adding that nice and beautiful glow or shine to 
the model skin. So you can see uh, right now the image looks a little bit better. So you can as well paint somewhere in the hair and every hair you feel like should have that nice and rich glow. So if at all the effect is too much, you can always come to the opacity right here and simply reduce on the opacity so that the effect is not too much. So that's the before, after, before, after. So I'll just take it around 50 before, after. So after doing this, anything is saving the image. So in order to save the image, simply come right here to File and come to Export. So just come to File export and come to export as and it's going to open up the export as dialog box and make sure the quality is set to the maximum quality format jpeg make sure the sample is set to by cubic sharper and after come and measure your embedded color profile and also convert srgb make sure the two options are checked and simply export the image and after exporting the image in a location that you want this is going to automatically close so this is how you can edit a a photo in photoshop from the very start to the very end and if i told you i've enjoyed this video don't forget to like this video and don't forget to subscribe if i told you're watching and you're not subscribed to this channel ronix from ronix photography thank for watching i'll see you in yet more videos on this channel don't forget to keep practicing and also keep creating